at your neighbor, say neighbor, he's done so much for me, I will not forget, I can't forget, I won't forget, he's been too good to me, mm. We better watch this, I can tell. I just... I, I can already feel this, so I ain't gonna mess with it. your hands and give God praise in the house. Come on. Vertical praise. Something out of your mouth. Not something for you, but something for him.
Hallelujah. Amen. Right before you're seated, or let's just stay standing. And uh, we're not quenching the spirit. We're just waiting for the appropriate time. I know Dr. Jeffers is waiting to get here, and we want to make sure he gets here. Amen. We need the creative combination. The spirit mood first, and then the word was spoken. And you can't have the creative miracle without spirit and word. So we're having the moving of the spirit. But we need to word to make the manifestation of what God wants to happen in this building today. Somebody say amen. So right now we're going to move right into our prayer session. This is where we pray for the sick and do a lot of things. So we want to do that now. And after that, we're going to move very quickly and get Dr. Jeffers and Sister Jeffers on the floor. We want them to have the opportunity and time to minister. We don't want to be in a hurry. Everybody say amen. Yes. We want you to know we are back here tonight at 6 with prayer. Um, Dr. Jeffers and Mrs. Jeffers will be here tonight with us. So they're going to be here tonight. And we'll be able to move in. So those of you that are sick <clears throat> and you need a touch from God in your body, we want to ask you to move right now quickly to the front. As they are coming, I want uh, Pastor and Sister Solis to come as well. And we do have other things in the house that we need to be careful of, and that is Sister Hadassah Wallace is in the hospital, and we really do need to pray for her right now. Sister Tricia Center has to go back to Stanford with some complications, and we do need God to undertake and overthrow in that situation as well. Grace needs strength. Let us keep uh, praying for the Baker family and they are in need of financial blessings and comfort during the loss of their loved one. See, Sister Karen Martin is here with us today. We're glad that she could make it to the house of the Lord, but we want to pray for her as well. There's someone named Lisa Cruz that has cancer, and then we're praying for Sister Regina Davis that needs healing. She's not in the house. I don't think I see her. But we want to be mindful for these prayer requests. At the same time, I'm going to bring in Brother and Sister Solis. They're coming. That's uh, Sister Emery. Sister Jeffers to come. Would you escort them up, Brother Aaron? Hmm. No, no. That's, yeah. I'm going to ask the ministry to come. Brother Solis and Sister Solis are going to be starting a church on the southwest side of town. They will be... Um, right on the corner of N and 8th over at Mount Pisna Baptist Church or AME. But on that very section of N and 8, you will see a sign that says Apostolic Tabernacle. Amen. So, we're excited. This will be our third church launch. We have our Spanish, we have our Asian. This will be a bilingual church launch on the southwest side of town. The reason we're doing this, there are people over there. They are hungry for God. They, they can't get over here. So if they can't get to the gospel, we're going to take the gospel to them. Amen. We've been talking about this for years, folks, and I'm not playing with y'all. We're going to do this. We will plant two or three more churches here in Merced in selective neighborhoods. 
so that we have light through the city. Is anybody ready for what God's ready to do? This will be in addition to three churches in Thailand, already built, already going, and also 2017 Apostolic Tabernacle Uruguay. Our job is to reach the world. Is anybody ready to reach the world for Jesus? Amen. Would you lift your hands? Father, in the name of the Lord today, there are many that are sick that need healing in their body. Some of them have situations of their soul is sick. Their minds are sick. Their emotions are tormented. But Father, you are the healer of the body, soul, mind, and spirit. And in accordance by now, in the name of the Lord, we pray for Pastor and Sister Solis. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Remove doubt and fear and unbelief by the authority that's in the name. We pray in the name of Jesus. Lose angels right now in the name of the Lord. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we pray. Heal God and deliver by the authority that is in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We pray the healing power, the healing virtue. God, destroy every yoke of sickness and disease. Every yoke of infirmity, we pray. Oh, Jesus. 
want you to lift your hands all over the building. Get that personal touch from God that you need right now. We pray corporately now, let you get that personal touch. Because he is God and there is none like him. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all, that you're able to ask or think because of the power that worketh in us. We pray. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated if you can. What a very powerful uh, manifestation of the presence of the Lord that we feel in uh, the sanctuary this morning. And right now, we're going to do something we don't normally do at nighttime, or we're going to do it right now. We need to do it right now. I'm going to ask. Uh, Pastor Sister Means to come, and oh, I'm, calling, I'm sorry, Sister Means and Sister Anita's going to come. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I could have Kanaz and Leilani up here. Kanaz is probably sick. He got sick at the tournament yesterday. Honey, go around. So we had our first novice tournament yesterday in Sacramento, and the kids were awesome, amazing. Uh, Kanaz was a trooper, and he came all the way to Sacramento, and he got sick. And that tells a lot for him, for his dedication to the team, and just he was really sick. So that was um, amazing that he came. But we took third place. <laughs> Yeah. And then along with that, Leilani took second highest score of proud of them. Thank you very much for your support. And thank you to Sister Means. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Well, I had our junior team, but we only had one novice that I started this year, and that was Simeon Macias. Simeon, run up here, brother. He teamed up with someone in Concord, and um, I, they killed it. They called him the beast. He's the beast. He... <laughs> He got the highest score of the tournament with three, di double di three digits, the 109 per game. <laughs> Scored highest. <laughs> On top of that, they brought home the first place trophy. Thank you so much for your support. And these kids, while you guys, were, your kids were out on Christmas break, these kids are learning verses every single day. So far, they know 97 verses. They still have about 150 left. So support, thank you so much for all you do. And I thank you and give honor to our pastor and sister Emery. We love you so much. Right. Marilyn Ewing has been baptized in Jesus' name. Miguel Garcia baptized in Jesus' name. All right. Nicol Nicholas Quirazzo. Is Nicholas here? Anybody know Nicholas? No Nick, okay. Christina Villa Lobos. All right. Okay, Anita's gonna accept for her then. All right. 
Monique Ann Guzman. All right, Monique. Monique has been baptized in the name of Jesus. And there's another one running. He's ready too. All right. Okay. You may be seated. Thank you for standing and thank you for, for having an awesome time with people being baptized. Amen. This is, these are life-changing things. Amen. And so we want to take this time for those of you, is this your very first time at the Apostolic Tabernacle? You are a first-time guest. It's your very first time for being here. If you're here, it's your very first time ever being here. Would you please stand so we can recognize you? Just, there you go, one, two, oh, is that it? Three, okay. Any more very first time? I'm, somebody's pointing over here. Where, where, where? Stand up. Stand. Oh, okay. Right over here. Good. Any more first time guests? No, okay. Awesome. Thank you for standing. Welcome to the Apostolic Tabernacle Church where God is real. Yeah. Amen. Now, we know that you passed a lot of churches to get to our church today. We're over here. We're the last thing on the outside as you're going to Planada. But we want to thank you for making the trip over. And we want you to know that you are in the perfect will of God today. We want you to know that God has something very special for you in the word of the Lord. That you are in the right time, in the right place for a miracle this morning in the house of God. Why don't the church clap their hands and give God some praise in the house? Amen. Also, we want to let you know that Sister Emery and I would love to meet you right after the altar call. Please exit through the double doors. Go to the Welcome Center. A, a, uh, uh, someone will be there to take you to our Welcome Center and then to our guest reception hall. So please check at the at the door right outside and you can see the main uh, lobby in, on your screen and behind me in the middle of the lobby and they uh, are someone a receptionist will take you back to the guest reception there we'll greet you for about five minutes we'd love to take a picture with you and get a little information and, and chat with you for just about five minutes and then we'll let you go we know it's a busy day today but if we can do that amen let's give our guests another big hand amen all righty so let us move on. Right now, we're at that juncture of the service where it's time for everybody to be blessed. Amen. Amen. And there is a blessing in giving unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. And Dr. Jeffress taught us something on, uh, on the other night. So we're going to put some of these concepts and these, these laws of the harvest in practice today. Amen. So it does us no good to hear the word if we don't live the word. Amen. And so I want you to now predetermine what you want to give to the Lord, understanding that what you give, God is going to press it down, shake it together, and make it run over, and then he's going to open up the windows of heaven and then pour you out a blessing that you're not able to receive. Now, predicated to that, I want you to think about how do you want God. Now, I don't want you to think about what you're going to give. I want you to think about who you're giving it to. Somebody say amen. amen. And our gifts today are as unto the Lord. Amen. 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 And so then, so I want you to get that ready. And then the ushers are going to get ready. And they're going to have envelopes. So you can designate where you want your money to go. Uh, uh, Brother Palmer is getting ready to come and uh, read some announcements to us. And we're going to move quickly into the preaching of the word. But as they're passing those out, and I want you to get what you're going to give, and I want you to get it in your hands. All righty? So, but ask the Lord what he will have you to give. I want you to also remember that we do have uh, visiting ministers and guests. We want to treat them well. We want to take care of them. So I'm going to ask you to give just a little, bit, a little bit more today to help us to do that. Amen? No, not too many amens. Some, all of a sudden, everybody just died. Somebody called 911. Everybody go in the shop when you start taking them out, talking about money. All right, so if you have already predetermined what you're going to give, I want you to rise to your feet really quickly. I'm going to let you sit back down. Stand, please, really quickly. All right, I want you to lift up what you have unto the Lord. Here's what Dr. Jeffers told us. Today, 
Father, we stand to give to you. Let heaven and earth and angels and men witness my gift unto you. And as I give, I pray, God, that you would press it down, shake it together, and make it run over. In addition, open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we cannot receive. And we're going to clap our hands and give you praise in advance because we believe your word today. Would you give God some praise in the house? A little bit louder, a little bit louder, a little bit louder. You may be seated. Praise the Lord, church. Is anybody happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. If you are watching online or if you've only brought plastic today, you can give online. Uh, you can use ccb or upcmerced.org, or you can use push pay. And we do have the uh, capabilities to take credit cards or debit cards, ATM transactions at the sound room, if you would like to give that way. Somebody say amen. amen. Prayer Sunday through Friday at 6 a.m. and Saturday at 7 p.m. Every Sunday at 6 p.m. before the service. Uh, please remember to keep your prayer watch. Drivers are needed for our church pickup. Uh, in the vans, please contact the office for more information. And we still have 2016 one-year Bible devotional and calendars on sale at the bookstore for only $3. Pretty good deal. Saturday, January 16th, uh, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. is Family Fun Day at Gateway Terrace Apartments. And if you'd like to help, please see Brother Solis to get involved. Sunday, January 17th at 11 a.m., we will have uh, Bishop Ron Mullings with us. That's always a pleasure and a privilege. Amen. Please make it a point to be here. Tuesday, January 19th at 6.30 p.m., uh, Financial Peace University begins. It's going to be in the Fellowship Hall, and um, I would suggest if you have not uh, enrolled in that program, please do so. Uh, 7 p.m., Prison Ministry, the same night in the uh, boardroom. Wednesday, January 20th at 7 p.m., Apostolic Tabernacle Connect event, and uh, that's always an excellent event uh, for uh, visitors and for new uh, members of our church. Tuesday, Friday, January 26th through the 29th is Landmark Conference at CLC in Stockton. Uh, Wednesday, January 27th, 8 p.m., we'll have Kids Church. Do we have a theme yet for that? Okay, I'm sure we'll hear that later. <laughs> All right, Thursday, January 28th at 9 a.m., Ladies' Day and Men's Day at Landmark. If you're able to take the day off, it's always worth it to go be a part of that. Sunday, January 31st is our fifth Sunday, and it doesn't say anything after that. Is that no service? One service. Oh, up there, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Monday, February 1st at 7 p.m. is All Church Prayer. Say, All Church Prayer. February 1st at 7 p.m. Tuesday, February 2nd at 6.30, Financial Peace University in the Fellowship Hall. And Friday, February 5th at 6.30 p.m., Real Talk for 60 and over. That's 60 years and over. 7 p.m. Men's Meeting, Saturday at uh, February 6th at 6.30, Courthouse Prayer. And Sunday, February 7th at 6 p.m., Reverend Luami Diaz will be with us. Amen. All right. Any, uh, let's see, any donations to our food pantry are very appreciated. There's a drop box in the foyer. Thank you for your giving in advance. And is the praise team ready? We got another announcement? All right. All right, let's all stand. Clap your hands unto the Lord one more time. And we're going to, um, everybody already knows Dr. Jeffers. We just, I want you to follow whatever he wants to do. He has liberty in the house of the Lord. So we want him to come as whatever, you, however you want to like to come, sir. Would you just slip your hands up to the Lord just a moment and tell him how much you love him? 
Come on, tell him who he is to you. Mm, wonderful counselor, mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Oh, Father, we worship you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you all the praise. And we bless your name for what you've done, God, for what you're doing, Lord, and even for what you are yet getting ready to do. God, we give you a yet praise. We may not see it yet, but we know you've already done it. And we give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. And we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. For truly you are worthy. You are worthy. You alone are worthy. Worthy. And we love you today. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. And we bless your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're not changing the order of service. You need to stay right there. Amen. Amen. It's not time to get lax. Amen. And lay back and get ready to take a nap. This is time to walk further into the presence of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And as we begun this meeting, amen, God was talking to you, all of you. Amen. Don't matter where you come from, whatever walk of life you've come. God was saying that you've got to learn this year to give him all you got. Amen. Don't just come in with an ordinary praise. Don't come in with an ordinary, oh God, we love you, thank you, Jesus, and sit it down. You want to give God all you got. Amen. Amen. Give him the fruit of your lips. Give him the fruit of your lips. Why? Because he's been good. You didn't have to be here today. You didn't have to be here today. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way and he's blessed you beyond measure and he deserves all of the glory he deserves all of the honor and he deserves all of the praise why because this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice I don't know about you some of y'all still sitting down if God ain't done nothing for you I ain't talking to you I'm talking to those who God done did something who the Lord has been good the Lord has been kind and you know what he's done for you you're the ones I'm talking to God has been too good for you to sit down and I'm not a cheerleader I'm not here to cheer you up those of you who got a praise in your spirits who love God with all your heart you ought to be getting up without us saying anything and raising your hands stomping your feet and blessing the God of your salvation why because he's good. He's good. He's good. He's good. Oh, he's better than us. Than we've been to us. We don't even praise him like we should. No, we don't. We don't praise him like we should. But he's good anyhow. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 And this year, God is calling for change. No more ordinary, he said. Extraordinary. Step into the extraordinary. And it's going to cost you something. It means getting out of your everyday doing things. It means stepping out of your comfort zone. You got to step out of it. Step out of it. If your shoes hurt, kick them off. If your suit too tight, don't put it on. But get in the presence of the Lord. Get in his presence. Get in his presence. Get in his presence. Get in his presence. Hallelujah! Don't just settle for the ordinary. Step into his presence. For in his presence is the fullness of joy. In his presence is the fullness of joy. This year, remember who you are and whose you are. You belong to the Most High God. You are children of the King. And if you're children of a King, then that means that you are kings and queens. Why? Because you're his children. You don't have to deserve it. You just are. That's who you are. So you just need to walk in it. 
Just walk in it. Just walk in it. Stop listening to the devil. Stop listening to his voice. Stop coming in agreement with him. He's saying you're nothing. You're nobody. Stop listening to him. Tell him to shut up. You are children of the most high God. Hallelujah. 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 Everything that you do, you ought to do it with all your might, with all your heart, with all your soul. Do it intentionally, not haphazardly. Give it all you got. And I promise you, if you will step into his presence as if it is not your last time, you will see God move. You will see God move. He can't move you in the miraculous unless you believe him, unless you trust him, unless you go past the ordinary. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all don't want to hear me, but it's all right anyhow. Hallelujah. 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 For you are more than conquerors. You're standing in the year of the conqueror. You are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mighty God. You serve a mighty God. You serve a mighty God. And there is none greater than him. There is none greater. Hallelujah. 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 Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You may be seated in his presence, but see, stay right there. Stay right there. Stay right there. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You guys need to stay on fire for God. This is the beginning of the year. Stay on fire. Don't go out already. Don't let your flame go out. Stay on fire. Stay on fire. And move forward this year. God wants to take you to some places you've never been before. But you got to be willing and ready to go. No more fear. No more fear. No more fear. No more fear. For has, God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I bless the name of the Lord. Amen. I thank God for being in another place that I've never been before. And I thank God for the reception, amen, for each one of you who are here, who came out to hear from the Lord. Not from me, amen, but from the Lord. Not from my husband, but from the Lord. Amen. We thank God for being the vessels that he's using, amen, but it's all about him. It's all about him. And we bless God for that. We thank God for your awesome leadership, amen, First Lady and Pastor Emery. We bless God for you. We bless God for you, amen. And we thank God for you. Hallelujah. 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 We have been enjoying very sweet fellowship, and we just don't take that for granted. We bless God because he is almighty, all-seeing, all-knowing, amen, omniscient, omnipresent, amen. There is none like him, and I thank God because if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I would be. I don't even know where I'd be. I don't even know where I would be. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be alive. He has kept me. Hallelujah. And I bless his name. And I thank you for being so good and so kind. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing a little something. Amen. And move out of the way. Hallelujah. But I bless God. Amen. For all that he is. All that I am. Amen. God has made me. I may not be like anybody else you've ever seen. But understand, I wasn't made to be like that. God made me different. And just as he made me different, each one of you are different. And stop trying to fit in with everybody else. God made you different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You be the best you that you can be. Be the best you that you can be. Hallelujah. Because each one of us are pieces of the puzzle. Amen. And that grander puzzle is of the kingdom of God. Realize that. Realize that. Hallelujah. And I'm not trying to preach. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But just depositing some seeds. Amen. Those seeds of light and life. 
because I speak life into you. I speak life into you. I speak life. I speak life and not death. Life, you shall live. You shall live. You shall live and not die. You shall live. You shall live and not die in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Stop listening to the enemy. That's what I keep hearing the Lord say. Stop listening to the enemy. Too many of you are listening. And that's why you're depressed. That's why you're stressed. That's why you're frustrated. That's why you're going through the things you're going through. You're listening to the enemy. Why you got problems in your home? You're listening to the enemy. Wrong mind. Wrong way of thinking. You line up with God and watch God move everything in your house. That's for the husband, the wife, the children, don't matter who you are. You line up and God will move. But you got to line up. You got to line up. Stop focusing on your issues and get your eyes on God. You line up and God will move everything around you. Because we are created to set the atmosphere. The atmosphere should not be changing us. We are light of the world. We are salt. Hallelujah. And what a salt do is seasons. It changes everything it touches. You should be changing everything you touch. Hello. Hello. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. As I was stood up here getting ready to come up, I just heard the Lord say, hey, hallelujah, a little song he put in my heart. And I'm going to sing a little bit of it. Amen. Hallelujah. You thought I was worth saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Ha, come on, y'all. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you came and changed my life so I could be free, so I could be whole, and I could tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving. Hallelujah. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. Oh, yes. So you clean me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life so I could be clean, so I could be whole, and I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving.
name, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Mm. Hallelujah. I'm going to move out the way. Choir, praise team. Y'all are wonderful. You sing wonderful. But y'all got to come up. I'm listening and I'm feeling, excuse me, pastor. Amen. I'm listening and I'm seeing and I'm feeling, but what I'm feeling from you is some of you are timid. Some of you are just kind of excited to be up here, but you got to understand it's, a, it's worth a lot more than that. You're not giving it all you got, and I'm feeling that, and I feel the Lord pulling at you. It's not to embarrass you. This is to help you. Man, if you're going to be up here, you are the examples out there, and you've got to be able to praise him and worship him on the floor before you get up here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when you're up here, you've got to praise him, worship him, sing to him, even more so than anyone out there. You've got to act like he's sitting back there looking at you. And you don't see nobody else but Jesus. And you got to give him your all. Give him your all. Give him your all. Hallelujah. Because when you do that, the presence of the Lord will come down. It'll come down. It'll come down. And it'll rest in this place. Hallelujah. And that's what we want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when you sing it, hallelujah to the one who saved my life, it should catch you in your belly. And you say, God, I'm giving you praise. God, I'm giving you glory. God, I'm giving you the honor. Hallelujah. Let's sing that one more time. I'm going to move out the way. Y'all understand? Hallelujah. 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 Forever so I can be free. So I can be free. There's a difference. There's a difference. Hallelujah. It is about the anointing. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Hallelujah. We are in the book of Psalm, Psalm 22, starting in verse 1. Psalm 22, verse 1. There's no chapter. What makes the book of Psalms so unique is there's no chapters really in the book of Psalms because it's a song book. And that's why we don't hear us say chapter 22 for Psalms because it's a song book. <clears throat> but one of the unique things that the book of Psalms psalms teaches us is that there's really no music that has been left the jews know many of the melodies to certain songs but much of the songs is not recorded for us because what is teaching us it's not so much the melody it's the words the melody is the a1 sauce to the steak which is the word so you don't drown your steak in a1 sauce and what happens to many of you, you're into the music, into the beat, and not into the words. And that's why some of you, you sing what's called gospel, but if you really listen to the words that they're singing, it's not gospel. <laughs> okay, moving right along. So, um, uh, some years ago, B.B. and C.C. Whining, when they were together, they... Um, had made a contract um, in making of their CD Heaven or their uh, music Heaven. And um, 
when you listen to it, I was listening to it one day, and I was, you know, I was all in it, you know, and, and there was one song called You, and I, I, I love that song. I was enjoying that song. One day the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, uh, would you please listen to the words? He said, you all moving and you ain't listening. And he said, as, you, as I listened to the words, he said, did you notice you're not hearing one name of God being mentioned? It's all you, which can be anybody. And then later I found out they had signed a contract at that point not to use the name of God. And there's one of their songs at that time actually been used in a love-making scene in a soap opera. Because it could be. Because it could apply to anybody. Amen. <laughs> now that's no what the Bible says sing with understanding. Know what you're singing. Amen. At the same token, when there is some serious gospel words, serious words, know what you're singing. Don't tell me you enjoy God and you look like you've been baptized in lemon juice. You don't even smile. My God, some of you smile, you end up with a cerebral hemorrhage. <laughs> Touch your neighbor and say, I'm enjoying Jesus. Jesus. Psalm 22, Psalm 22, verse 1. We're going to read this out loud together. Amen. We're going to actually read a few verses of this together and then enter right into the word of the Lord by the help of God. He says, this is the words of Jesus while on the cross. So let's read out loud together. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me from the roaring? Uh-huh, the next verse. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not in the night season. And I'm not, meaning I'm not silent, meaning I crowd anytime. I'm not picky about when I cry out. I cry out at night. I cry out in the day. I cry out in any season. I'm, I'm not silent. Anybody know what? I'm talking to you at all times. But read on, verse 3. But thou art holy. O thou that inhabits the praise of... Now, did you notice that shift? I cry unto you. There's an understanding here. I'm not really hearing you, but I know you're holy and I know you're worthy of praise. So even though I don't feel like you're hearing me, because I know you're holy and because I know you're worthy of praise, I'm going to keep talking to you. All right, verse 4. <clears throat> Our fathers trust in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. All right, 5. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trust in thee and were not confounded. 6. But I am a, and no man, a reproach of men. Just, now, you delivered our fathers, you delivered other people, but it seems like um, I ain't worth that much. <laughs> All right, y all, y all, maybe y'all don't know what that feels like. I don't know, maybe. You know, sometimes you feel like, you know what happens to many of you? Uh, you live this out by having faith for others, but you don't have faith for yourself. You tell others that they're worthy and God wants to bless them and God loves them and God's going to help them and then you don't believe that for you. If you can't say amen, drop the end and say amen. Verse 7, verse 7, all they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the... So you thought that was a black thing. You thought that was a... <laughs> you thought that was being ghetto fabulous. No, no. There ain't nothing new under the sun. Verse 8. He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him. Seeing he del Th this was said to Jesus while on the cross. All right. Verse 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I, was up, when I was upon my mother's breast. Let's just quickly, sound people, if you would help me, just go right back quickly to verse 1. And verse 1 is our text. Read this one more time out loud with me. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the world? I want to speak to you just on one word from that verse. Why? Why? Lift your hands one more time. Father, speak to us a very clear word. We don't need to just be stirred. We need answers. We need to be changed. Strengthen us. Courage us. Build us up. Let us not leave here the way we came. And when we go home and go about our daily lives, may we encounter you. May we engage you. May we interact with you. May we live with you, not simply visit you. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Before you're seated, greet a few people around you, hug somebody, shake somebody's hand, tell them I'm glad you're in the house of the Lord. Come on, you might be the only smile somebody's seen. Come on, hug somebody, shake someone's hand. Tell them, I'm glad you're, come on, smile at them. Glad you're in the house of the Lord. So grateful you're in the house of the Lord. As you heard my wife say this is her first time here, I've had the privilege of being in this church many times, but really want to thank God that my wife is here with me this time. Amen. She's been directing choir since a teenager, and so that's why you see she knows much about praise and worship, but she would tell you that's not that long because she's only 25. And we are so grateful for the Emory's. We love Pastor and First Lady. We appreciate them so much. Amen. Been enjoying sweet, sweet fellowship from the Lord. Why? When the Lord was speaking to me about what he wanted to bring to this church, he said, I want you to know that I have these people in transition. And right now, they are caught between points in transition. And I need you to help them to cross over to the other side to where I want to bring them. Well, at that point, I was prepared to go into a certain type of word. And the Lord said, yes, that word is needful. In other words, discussing 2016, what God is saying about the year where God desires to take you. But he said, before they can go there, there are certain things that are still holding them back to crossing over. And he said one of the major things that is holding them back is why. Why have you allowed certain things, God? Why haven't you stopped certain things, God? Why haven't you changed certain things, God? Can I tell you in all honesty that many times what gives us the hardest trouble with God is what we actually know about God. You see, if I didn't know God was a healer, well, then I wouldn't be upset if he didn't heal. But you're telling me I am the Lord that healeth thee. Then why am I still sick? If I didn't know you were a deliverer, then I wouldn't be up so upset if I was stuck in a trial, especially for a long period of time. But the scripture says, this poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. But yet I still seem to be in this difficulty. Someone shout, why? The Lord wants to make clear to you that his objective is not simply to give you a comfortable life. <clears throat> Do not confuse God with Santa Claus. Don't, don't confuse God with a genie in a bottle. What happens to many of you is you simply want to talk to God to get your wishes met. Once your wishes are met, you want him to go back in his bottle. And don't disturb your life until it's time to get some more answers. I want you to see a very famous passage of scripture. Whether you're in church or out of church, you'd normally have heard this scripture, even if nothing more at funerals. Psalms 23 verse 1. Psalm 23 verse 1. Many of you can automatically start quoting it. In fact, many of you can quote the entire psalm. But it takes God to help us not just to intellectually know something, but to understand it in order to be able to apply it. I make two prayers to God. God, grant me revelation with impartation. Impart means to give. I need you to give me revelation. But then grant me revelation with application. I need you to help me to apply that which you've given to me. Because revelation without application means nothing. There is always practical application to spiritual revelation. 
So we know it well. The Lord, come on, say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I sh Now, would you say the first two words? Say it again. Did you notice he does not say my savior is my shepherd? This is very uh, determined on his part. It's not my savior is my shepherd. It's the Lord is my shepherd. Why? A savior does not make demands of you. A savior only comes to save you and give you what you have need of. But a Lord makes demands on you. So you want the I shall not want, but you don't want the Lord. I want to live the way I want to live. I want to sleep around. I want to do whatever it is I want to do. And I expect you to bless me. And I get upset with you if you don't bless me. I want to pray when it's convenient. See, what's happened to many of you, you don't get it. But God has never heard so much from you until he's let you lose your job. Now the bills are stacking up. All of a sudden, you got an instant prayer life. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Before that, you didn't have time to pray. But now all of a sudden, not only do you pray, you got rhythm with, oh, Lord. Yo, you, yo, I mean, you, <laughs> you get way down deep with the prayer. Why did he let that happen to you? So that you would have time for him. Why does God allow us to suffer? I mean, yes, there's sin in the earth. This came from Adam. Yes, there's difficulty. But what does God actually say for why he allows certain things to happen? Uh, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to need you to be in the Amplified Bible, uh, sound people. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1 in the Amplified Version. I want you to see what... God has to say through the Apostle Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, Amplified Version, so that you can understand why God allows some of the things that he allows. Now, I'm going to say what I said on Wednesday. I'm just going to be honest with you. I've been shocked over how many things God has allowed. Now, maybe you haven't, but I have been shocked over the extent that God will allow things to go, the longevity he will tell you, I hear you. He will give you the confidence that he heard you. He will give you the peace that he heard you. And then sit down and cross his legs. You say, what do you mean by that? No, he ain't moving. I heard you. I'll bless you. I ain't moving. And you say, well, wait a minute. See, here's where we struggle. Because I feel... It's tough for me to comprehend that you hear me, yet you're not moving. Because that goes together. If you hear me, you move. <laughs> he said, no, I heard you, I'm not moving. Because there's a time limit that I have that I'm working on, and I'm also revealing some things in your life. I'm showing you some things about you. I'm showing you how impatient you are. See, what happens to a lot of you, you, uh, those of you that are even saved, um, <laughs> you lose your Holy Ghost when you get in the car. You, 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 you set the Holy Ghost on the corner and say, don't go nowhere. I'll pick you up when I'm done driving. But right now, we got to get somewhere. And I don't got time to be Christian and nice. Folk in the way. <laughs> and they need to move. <laughs> and, 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 and so God said, you know, I'm going to allow you to sit at a red light. I'm going to let that... Sunday driver on Wednesday who sightseeing get in front of you and you are literally you get any closer you got to introduce yourself it don't affect them they're not going any faster 
In fact, they slow up more. Now, why are you really mad at them? Because when you followed them off the highway, they were speeding. But when they got down to the rural areas, they slowed down and go 10 miles below the speed limit. You think they're the problem. You need to teach them how to drive. You have concluded that they got their license from a bubblegum machine. Somehow they got yoked up with the Mickey Mouse Reject Society. And you need to help them. God said, no, no, I let this happen so that I could show you some things about you. I'm showing you that you have a temper, that if you don't learn to control this through me, I can't do what I want to do in your life. And you know what God said to some of you? He said he gets amazed with some of you because you will sit in your car and talk to the person. <laughs> now, you won't talk to God in prayer in the car because that looks strange. Hala. But you'll talk to somebody who can't even hear you. But won't talk to somebody who can hear you. So why do you allow these things to happen? How do you say you love me and allow difficulty in my life? You see, I love you the way you are, but I love you enough not to leave you the way you are. Somebody lift your hands and tell God, thank you. <laughs> thank you. If we got some honest folk in here, you're going to lift your hands and tell God, thank you. Because <laughs> sometimes I can't take me either. <laughs> I know y'all, the rest of y'all are holy. You don't have to worry about it. But if you admit your halo's held up by your horns, That's why God's got to help us. God's got to teach you how to control that little red devil behind the white pearly gates. The little red devil is your tongue. The white pearly gates is your teeth. Your teeth are white. Your tongue is red. Some of you, why your, why your tongue is red is because you have blood. Because you cut people with your words. You want to be used by God, but you can't control your mouth. Okay. All right, I, I, I'm going to get to the scripture. I'm going to <laughs> get to the scripture. But let, let me just show you one thing here. Uh, <clears throat> Sound people, get ready to turn with me just for a moment to Proverbs 29 and, and 11. Don't put it up just yet. Just get it on the screen where you are, and when I'm ready, we'll have you put it up. Proverbs 29 and 11 uh, in the King James. Um, I was in a place preaching, a uh, pretty predominantly Caucasian place, and, and um, after I'd done preaching, there was a line of people coming to greet me, and there was another black brother, you know, because I was playing basically there, I was playing Spot the Black, and to really find anybody, I had to hold up a mirror, but um, that was the whole town, um, but... <clears throat> So there was another, another black brother in, in the church, and he was in the sound room, and he was in the line. He came up to me, and he said, you're a sound man's nightmare. I'm like, you know, bro, you really a lot of help up in here. They already look like they want to lynch me, and you're going to help out with this. <laughs> so I told him, I said, well, you're welcome. God must know what you need. Uh, because, by the way, you're obviously a Proverbs 29, 11 individual, the first part of the verse. So you can put that on the screen for us, Proverbs 29, verse 11. <clears throat> See, those of you that always want to keep telling people, I'm going to tell you off. I'm going to give you peace of my mind. God has one word for you. You're a fool. 
You always want to utter all of your mind. That's why some of you crazy right now. You always giving away pieces of your mind. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. That's why you crazy now. You got a little tick now. Because you always give away pieces of your mind. You don't hardly got no mind left. I feel like the United Negro Fund, the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Quit giving away pieces of your mind and hold your peace and let the Lord fight your All right, that was a commercial back break. Now back to the main program. <laughs> I want to use some of you in this year, I really do. And you say, why do folk always seem to bother me? I ain't trying to bother nobody. But some folks seem like they always find me. Clerks seem like they always get nasty with me. And I ain't do nothing. God said, yeah, even the Walmart greeters got attitude with me. God said, that's because I'm dealing with you. I'm dealing with your tongue, with your mouth, with your attitude. Because some of you don't say nothing, but it's your face. You know what your face, who are you looking at? You want some of me? You feeling froggish, baby? Leap. Oh, by the way, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know you see those folk in church? My God, look like someone stepped on your toe. You don't even want to shake their hand. And see, what's happening, some of your faces, that's why God's going to teach you not just to control your tongue, control your face. If you're happy and you know it, notify your face. <laughs> some of you look mean. You look like you've been chewing on briars. You act like, please say praise the Lord to me because you're the disease, I'm the cure. Say something to me. Make my day. And you want me to use you? See, I'm letting some stuff happen to you. I'm letting some of your relatives get on your nerves. I'm letting your art lie on you. I'm letting that crazy uncle you have that's as nutty as a bed bug always act a fool when you're around. Seem like he's sane any other time, but when you're around, he act up like a fool. Because I'm teaching you how to control your face and how to control your mouth. Hmm. Somebody lift your hand and say, speak to me, Lord. <laughs> See, here's what a lot of you don't understand. God is all powerful you say i understand that no you're not really getting it because if you understood he was all powerful then you also know he's all knowing i know that well if you really knew he was all knowing you wouldn't be thinking some of the stuff you thinking because <laughs> he knows what you're thinking <laughs> so some of you sit there with see some of you you've learned the professional look you sit there and smile yes Yes, and then your head going, stupid idiot. Yes, yes. And you think because you're smiling and got this chessy cat grin from side to side that nobody know what's going on. And God in your head, and he's listening to the soap opera. It's called As the Stomach Turns. And he watches you while you cut, edit. You're worse than a Hollywood producer. Cut, edit, insert new scenes. Wish my posse was with me because we would have told them something. We, we got all kinds of things running on. And God's going, you know what I'm really trying to do with you? I'm trying to let some stuff happen to you that makes you know you. You want me to deliver you. You want me to help you. And I want to deliver you. But here's the problem. If I deliver you and don't change you, you're only going to lose what I give you. 
And some of you don't really know God all that well because you, you, you make prayers that God looks at you going, oh, you so cute, baby. You said, Lord, if you just let me win, you just give me the numbers to the lottery, I, I'll give some to the church. And the Lord, oh, you, you don't know me too well, do you, honey? <laughs> and then there's the Christian lottery, the publisher's clearinghouse. That's why you ain't want none of that either. <laughs> See, God said, no, no, the problem is not that you don't have enough money. The problem is many times what I've given you, you don't manage. So you go, well, wait a minute, God, I need some more money. God's going, okay, but what are you doing with the money I give you? First of all, no farmer eats up all of its seed and expects a harvest. You keep spending the money on you and never sow it anywhere and then expect a harvest at the time of need. Can I say again what God said Wednesday? That you wouldn't give a quarter to a baby because you know what the baby's going to do with the quarter. He's going to choke on it. And God knows that when he gives you extra money, what you do is choke on it. You spend it all on you or all on what you want, and you don't consult him. You tell God, this is my money. I'll work for it. I put in 40 hours. I sweated for this. I spend this any way I please. Thank you. God's going, that's why we ain't giving you no more. That attitude of yours, that you actually think it's your money. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Look at it again. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Actually, start at verse 17. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, start at verse 17. I, I want you just to see this because, you see, God wants to train you. He doesn't want to just simply deliver you. He wants to develop you. He wants to turn you into people that have understanding. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 17. Beware lest you say in your mind and heart, my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this. Be careful when you start doing that. Well, I worked for four. So you know what happens to a lot of you? You have a spirit of entitlement. I work hard for my money. I ought to be able to buy this purse if I want it. I'm not going to tell me how to spend my money. I don't know who you think you are, but you better find it someplace else. All this attitude. You want God to be gentle with you and kind with you while you keep this raunchy attitude. Parents, I got any parents in the house? You know you can be real sweet to your children till you dripping like honey on them, but let them change their attitude and see what happens to your attitude. Now, I don't know how you was raised, but I had a black mama. I know you can't tell, but I, I had a... <laughs> I, I had to straighten that out, Pastor. I had to make that clear. <laughs> Mine was from Georgia. When my mama talked about Georgia ham, she meant watermelon. Because you ate ham like you ate watermelon like it was ham. Smacked your lips and tore it up. As one person say, mama didn't play. Mama found out there was recess in school, mama quit school. Mama don't play. I was in service one time with a friend of mine and and, you know, the friend was trying to play and talk, and mama would turn around and shh. I said, man, you better quit. He's going to get me killed. <laughs> he, he kept going, you know. He stopped a little bit, and then he started up again. Finally, I said something to him, and I said a little bit too loud. Mama heard me. Mama went, hallelujah. <laughs> hey, glory. Thank you. <laughs> All in one motion. She felt the spirit, and I did too. <laughs> you say, what are you talking about? I'm saying that your children will oftentimes dictate how you respond. If they're sweet and loving, you tend to be sweet and loving. But they want to act like that what you bought, they own. Now watch this. you got to watch this. 
you actually will give them ownership. Go to, even when you're mad at them, go to your room. Whose room? You just gave them ownership. Now you're mad at them, but you gave them ownership. Pick up your clothes. So you give them ownership, but when they act like it's, it's entitled to them, oh, you make it clear. I bought that. Well, that's mine. Mm, it was. You know the two fingers? Give it up. We locking that up now. And see, that's what a lot of you don't understand. God gave it to you, gave you ownership of it. But when you start taking on the spirit of entitlement, like it really yours, oh, give it back. <laughs> parent, parent, P-A-R-E-N-T, parent. P-A-Y-R-E-N-T. In the word parent is rent. I, I, I pa rent. <laughs> because parents pay. To raise a child from the crib, not paying for college, not paying for luxury things like going to on, on uh, vacations, not paying for things like Xbox, they estimate it costs a parent well over $300,000 per child. Parents pay. <laughs> what interest? Pastors, they need some back pay with some interest. And so that's why parents will say to you, no pay, no say. You living up here for free, I'm paying for everything, and all of a sudden you groan. You want to say when you coming home? You, want, you groan. Now, a grown person takes care of themselves. And when you take care of yourself, I treat you like you're grown. But if I'm paying for everything, just because you're 25, and yet I'm paying for everything, you ain't grown. You say, preacher, you're a meddler. I sure am, but I'm a real good one. You say, what's the point with that? Because Jesus paid it all. He's the ultimate parent. All to him I... How'd you get so grown telling God what you gonna do, where you gonna go, who you gonna hang with? Some of y'all are amazing. You are amazing. You wanna take off and go see Mickey. You telling God where you going. You don't ask God. I don't know what kind of parent you had. But you didn't tell my mama where you was going. I want to go to Johnny's house. You didn't tell mama you was going to Johnny's house. You asked. <laughs> see, you know what's so amazing? You want to take off, go see Mickey. Stuff starts going wrong on your vacation, then you want to blame God. What you don't understand is when you take off and go to different places, you deal with different spirits and territories. Those spiritual forces want to know one thing and one thing only. Are you here by permission? Do you have authority to be here? If you don't have authority to be here, you are blue light deli special. They will follow you back home. That's why some of you ever since vacation, everything's been a living hell. Because those spirits followed you back. Because you weren't there by permission. You didn't get your father's permission to be there. You want God to use you, but you don't want to act like you're his child. You want to act grown. Hey, parents, can we get to some of the favorite sayings? As long as you're under... Ooh, I really got some parents up in here. <laughs> I like a stereo. <laughs> that was <a> stadium sound. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
He will abide by? <laughs> Parents, God's got something to tell you. As long as you're under his roof, it's called the sky. You will abide by his rule. Oh, come on. You, my mama used to say, sometimes I ask a question, I'm your mama. That's why I said so. That's your answer. Don't keep asking now because that's your answer. I'm your mama. I said so. I wish some of y'all get some revelation. God said, I'm God and I said so. Don't keep asking now. I'm God and I That's why I'm letting you go through all this so you will learn who I am. Come on, somebody lift your hands a moment and worship him for who he is. Mm. You got to teach us. You want to bless us. You want to use us. But you got to give us some understanding. You know, God gets amazed with a lot of you. He really does. You say, what do you mean? Well, you understand that if you go work for a clown called McDonald's, that clown going to tell you what to wear. You say, I don't like stripes. They make me look fat. <laughs> well, you don't want a job here. You're going to work here for this clown. You putting on stripes. And for minimum wage, you will change your wardrobe. But if God tells you what to wear, that's legalism. I wear what I like. I wear my style. Now what parent, what good parent, just lets their child at a young age pick out what they, come on. That's why some of you right now got blackmail pictures. Because when you dress your baby and your, your child, oh! Ma, you dress me like that. That's right. And you act up. I'm going to show it to your friends. <laughs> because you choose what your baby wears. You bought it. You dress them. You put it on them. That's good parenting. And even when the child grows a little older, you still pick out their clothes. And when they get to a certain age where you feel they're mature enough, you many times tell them what you're wearing, you pass it by me. If I don't like it, you won't change it. But all of a sudden, God's not supposed to tell you what to wear. Oh, you need to get changed. You need, a, you need a transformation. No, friend, this is much more than just outward clothing. What this is about is a principle of submission with joy, learning, knowing who he is, that he's my parent. He should be able to lead me, guide me, talk to me, train me. Shout yes. Now, now let me get back to this, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 1, because I need to get to this why in the Amplified. Why does God allow me to suffer? Why does God allow certain things to happen? Listen to what he says. So since Christ suffered in the flesh for us, for you, did you hear this? You've got to hear this next thing. Arm yourselves with the same thought and purpose. You say, I don't understand. I'm trying to live for God. How come everything's going wrong? Okay, are you reading your Bible? You are actually told to put on a certain way of thinking. <laughs> that you're going to have difficult, God never, ever promised you that you would not have difficulties. He never made that promise. In fact, he promised you those that live godly in Christ Jesus shall. You're going to have trouble. People are going to lie on you. People are going to hurt you. People are going to think that's in itself is not the problem. It's how you handle it. God let some stuff happen just to get some of this. See, we deal with three H's. Three H's. One is meant to be capital. The other two are meant to be lowercase. We get them mixed up, though, sometimes, Pastor. The first H is Holy Ghost. 
The next H, which is supposed to be lowercase, is hormones. And the third H is hood. What? And what we tend to do is make hood capitalized. See, some of you saved, but you ain't all that saved. <laughs> Someone does something to you, says something to you, like, oh, girl, please, don't, don't, you almost gave me a flashback. <laughs> Ooh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I almost cut you and said, hallelujah, while well, doing it. Don't, don't do that. I was going to slap you in Jesus' name. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> See, God said, you've got to get in your head, arm yourselves with the same thought and purpose. Listen to this. Patiently to suffer Whew. rather than fail to please God. Can I tell you why a lot of us are really struggling? Because you are trying to please you rather than please God. You're tired of the situation. You're tired of the struggle. You're tired of how you're feeling. So all you know is you want out. Whew. Getting quiet in here. He said, when you really mature and you grow up, you grow up to listen to what he says. You're, you're done. <laughs> For whoever has suffered in the flesh, having, go ahead to verse 2, having the mind of Christ, <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry, thank you. For whoever has suffered in the flesh, having the mind of Christ, or having, go ahead, verse 2, so that he can no longer spend the rest of his natural life living by his human appetites and desires, but he lives for what God wills. In other words, God said when you really mature, he said, let me tell you what maturity looks like. Maturity looks like when you stop being selfish. And you don't just dress your style anymore, but you consult. You just don't go where you want to go, you consult. You just don't do what you want to do anymore, you learn to talk to me. Maturity looks like when it's no longer all about you and all about your comfort zone and all about what you want. Maturity is when you are willing to let me use you to bless others. And it's not all about you just getting so that you can feel better, but it's about bless me so I can bless others. Oh, God, raise me up so I can... Can I tell you a question the Lord asked me? Nothing trick about the question, but he asked me two questions many years ago. The first question was, son, did I die for myself or did I die so others can live? Come on, everyone shout so others can live. Second question he asked me was, so then do you want to be like me? Because if you want to be like me, there's some stuff I'm letting you go through. It's not about you. Have you ever been through something going, I ain't getting nothing out of this. I don't even know why I got to go through this. You're right. You're not getting anything out about this. You're going through this to help somebody else to live because you're being like him. Oh, God, mature us. Oh, God, grow us up. Oh, God, change the way that we're thinking so that we're not all about our appetite, not all about what I want. Some of you bless your heart, simple stuff, even going out to eat. We always have to go to your favorite restaurant. You don't know how to share, how to let somebody else go to theirs. Everybody got to like what you like. Oh, you, you know, some of you have this not, I, well, hey, you don't like it? That's your business. I enjoy this, so that's where we'll be going. You better find something. Water pretty good. A little lemon make it better. But see, you don't have that same attitude now when you go in some place you don't want to go, but somebody else wants to go there. You don't know what it is to have a kind, gracious spirit and try to find something on the menu you like. Because you want to bless them. And you want them to know the joy of receiving. God said, oh, I'm going to mature this church and grow you up. That's why pastor's so pushing you out of these four walls. Because God said, I've been pouring in. I've been giving to you. I've been laying hands on you. I've been giving you miracles, signs, and wonders. I've been giving you financial blessings. But I didn't do all this for you to hoard it to yourself. I did this to use you to bless somebody else. Shout yes! Come on, lift your hands a moment and just open up your mouth. 
Some people, while we're doing that, go to St. Mark chapter 11, verse 25. In the Amplified Version, come on again, just lift your hands to him. There's a beautiful spirit in this house that God's working on. Why are you letting stuff happen to me? Why are you letting me get hurt? Because I'm trying to teach you how to be like me. I'm trying to teach you how to love. I know they did you wrong. I know if this was to go to court, everybody would agree that they're guilty and you're not. Then why is it happening to me? Because you have to be like me. I was not guilty. And yet I was being crucified for what I did not do. See, a lot of you can take stuff, but you can't take being punished for what you did not do. But if you're going to be like him, you're going to get punished for stuff you didn't do. Why? It's to try your attitude and to try your spirit. Can you still have joy? Or do you look like you've been baptized in lemon juice? Do you look like your bottom lip is playing handball with the curve? Do you act lower than a pregnant ant? I hang around pastor too long. They ain't rubbing off on me. <laughs> pastor like, I ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> Can you still have joy when you're not treated right? Oh, I know you can shout and dance after he touched you and after he blessed you. But while you're bleeding, can you still lift your hands to him? And say, though you slay me, yet will I trust in you. Can you still lift your hands to him with tears coming down your face and saying, I don't even know why you're allowing this. But I will bless the Lord at all times. Why did you let people hurt me? I want to tell you one of the key reasons why God lets people hurt you. I don't have time to get everything, but can I just get into this? Whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. Now, the Amplified, the reason why I want to use the Amplified in this is because the Amplified is going to help break down the word forgive. Forgive him, which means let it drop. You know, drop it like it hot. <laughs> let go of it. Leave it. Let it go. What do you mean? Stop revisiting in your thinking. Because you know a lot of you say, oh, I forgive you. And then you have these visions of running them over with a bus. <laughs> Both wheels, but boom, boom. <laughs> Some of you are like, you know, I forgive you, but just stay away from me. If I see you, I ain't responsible. I'm just, I'm just letting you know. Because I'm liable to slap you so hard, I'll send your teeth to the dentist and leave you at home. <laughs> so just, just. Touch your neighbor, say real talk, real talk, real talk. I'm just saying what some of y'all been thinking. Some of y'all want to sit there and act like you just, oh, you know, that's not me. And, uh -huh. Did you see it? said, now listen to this. In order that your Father who's in heaven may also forgive you of your own failings, shortcomings, and let them drop. God said, if you don't forgive and let it drop, I'm not going to let it drop. So you might say, well, they don't deserve to be forgiven. Well, maybe they don't. But if you want forgiveness... <laughs> By the way, in case you didn't know it, the whole premise of forgiveness is that the person doesn't deserve it. So when God forgave you, it's not because we deserved it. Forgiveness is based on mercy. Mercy holds back from you what you deserve. Grace gives to you what you do. Mercy holds back from you what you deserve. Grace gives to you what you do not deserve. Somebody say thank you for mercy and grace. 
I know your father may have left you, but ask God to help you to forgive. I know you may have been molested or raped, but ask God to help you to forgive. Maybe your father or your mother used to beat you, amen, like some red-headed stepchild left in an orphanage. Maybe they beat you so severely until you bled, but ask God to help you to forgive. No matter what someone does to you, it can never be compared to what you've done to God. Help me to let it go, let it drop, release it so I can get released and move on with my life. Shout yes. Do you understand the principle that if you're driving, what happens if you keep staring in the rear view mirror? See, the rear view mirror shows you your past. It shows you where you've been. It shows you what's behind you. If you keep staring at your past, if you keep staring about how they molested you and what they did, you will crash your present. That's why you turn to drugs and sexual behavior and alcohol for emotional medication. I know daddy left you. I know you're a daddy's little girl. I know you struggled, but oh God, help me to let it go. Why would you do this? You knew how you made me. Why would you do this? Everyone shout why. why? See, God doesn't have a problem with you asking why. What God has a problem with is the attitude that can come with the why. Parents, you a lot of times don't have problems with your children asking why. What you have problems with is when they ask you a question and they act like they're the teacher. They ask you why, like you stupid, trying to make you recognize something. 